Hi, my name's Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll chronicle the journey of Ash's Galarian Farfetch from a wild brawler into a gallant knight. Along the way, we'll explore its zest for combat, proud nature, and bond with Ash. This video is brought to you by Semford. Farfetch debuted in the episode Toughing It Out as a bold bruiser who loved nothing more than to challenge all those who crossed its path. Because Ash and Go heard tale of its power while visiting the Galarian town of Winden, they sought it out so that they could each try and catch it. They were surprised to discover that Farfetch looked totally different from its Cantonian counterpart, but they couldn't have been more impressed by the size of its massive leak. Had they read the Pokedex entry from Pokemon Shield, they would have known that Galar's long and thick leaks are the reason that it developed a regional form and fighting typing. The Pokemon was too tough to be caught without a fight, so Go battled it with his Farfetch'd. Unfortunately for fans of Gen 1, the Galarian won with nothing but Night Slash. Since Farfetch'd was raring to keep battling, Ash and Riolu answered its call with Vacuum Wave. The Wild Duck deflected the attack, but suffered major injury while readying its counter. Although Riolu followed up by dodging Night Slash and landing Vacuum Wave, Farfetch'd reveled in the thrill of battle, overcame Double Team, and delivered a mighty blow with Brutal Swing. Riolu knocked Farfetch to the ground with reversal, but Ash found the battle invigorating, so he encouraged the wild Pokemon to keep battling. It fell in exhaustion while heeding his call, so Ash rewarded its diligence with a trip to Nurse Joy. Because Farfetch wanted to fight again after getting healed, Ash recognized it as a kindred soul, asked it to join his team, and promised to nurture its abilities. Soon after accepting the request, it joined Ash on his adventure in Sobbing Sobble and befriended Sophocles Togedemaru in the new old gang of mine. To help Farfetch get stronger, Ash ordered it to train with Riolu in Betrayed, Bothered, and Beleaguered. Despite the fact that Riolu secured an easy win, Ash kept faith in Farfetch's potential for greatness. In Solitary and Menacing, for example, he gave it a second shot by using it against Beast Halucha. Regrettably, Halucha upped its power with Hone Claws, flew through Night Slash, let loose Karate Chop, increased the intensity, withstood Brutal Swing, and won with Flying Press. Before we delve into the rest of Farfetch's history, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that offers premium designer scents from over 600 brands. Unlike other subscription services, they only send you what you request, so there's no unwanted product. Each month, you'll get a 30-day supply of whatever unique fragrance you choose from their website. If you're unsure of what scent to select, Scentbird's simple quiz gauges what they think you'll most enjoy. This month, I chose to get a room scent from Confessions of a Rebel, as I read that it was perfect for date nights. Having used the scent several times in the last month, I can definitely vouch for its effectiveness. It smells fantastic. I also chose Sanctuary's Amure Leopard, as I love both the smell of crisp apples and leather woods. Delicious. The service is typically $16 per month, but if you act now and use my code ASILVER, you'll get 55% off, meaning you'd only be paying $7. Currently, the service is available in the US and Canada. And now back to Farfetch's history. Farfetch missed out on the rematch with B and Octo Gridlock at the gym, but returned to the spotlight in Trials of a Budding Master. After being used in several off-screen coronation battles, Farfetch revealed that it held Ash in little regard, completely unlike his other Pokémon. It saw Ash as little more than a tool to help it master every leak move and become a leak master. As a consequence of Farfetch's selfish behavior, it struck Ash at Cerise's laboratory, put him in harm's way at the rock tunnel, and tossed him into a mountain without a second of hesitation. In spite of its rude actions, Ash never stopped loving the Pokémon with all his heart. He so believed in the Wild Duck that he used it against Great Class Trainer Dozer and his Girder. At the battle's start, Farfetch matched Girder's intensity, whipped up a storm, and used Night Slash. Although Girder did heavy damage with high horsepower and sent it flying, Farfetch stood its ground, retaliated with Night Slash, cut through Focus Blast, and unleashed a volley of Fury Cutters. Girder blocked each and every strike and nearly went out with Brutal Swing, but the Galarian survived the blast, focused its energy, and shot off a fissure. Because its muscular foe stopped the assault and issued a vicious taunt in response, Farfetch went mad with Fury, attacked of its own volition, evaded Focus Blast, and fired off Night Slash. Following the landing of the attack, the two fighters activated their respective power-ups of Focus Energy and Bulk Up, swapped a bevy of brutal swings, sparred intensely, and locked their blades in mortal combat. Girder gave the Galarian all it had, but Farfetch shattered its beam and struck its head with a fervor few could rival. By defeating its fellow fighter, it earned its first on-screen win and advanced Ash to rank 381. 
rather than rest after the battle, Farfetch taunted Girder, continued training, and accepted a challenge from a trainer named Rinto who had watched its previous battle from afar. Showing that Farfetch still had much to learn, Rinto's Gallade effortlessly dodged all of its attacks and easily seized victory with False Swipe. Because the loss deeply saddened Farfetch, Rinto promised they would battle again someday. In preparation for said day, he suggested the wild ducks start to take notice of its surroundings, stop relying on brute force alone, and learn how to fight in a more controlled manner. At episode's end, Ash cheered Farfetch'd up by adopting a leak of his own and vowing that they would train day in and day out for the rematch. In searching for chivalry, their desire to get ever stronger led them to take a trip to the Castle of Chivalry, a training center operated by Wickstrom of the Collosion Elite Four. At the castle, Wickstrom made it his mission to help Farfetch unlock its full potential. He wanted it to adopt a readiness to help the vulnerable and acquire chivalrous traits like loyalty, courage, and honor. In order to achieve his goal, Wickstrom tasked Farfetch, Ash, Go, and Go Scyther with three challenges. Once the foursome was armored up, they proved their resolve by completing the first of the three challenges. To do so, they trudged through a Probopass's magnetic pole and ran 10 laps around the castle. During the second challenge, they asserted their bravery by traversing the Labyrinth of Doubt. The Labyrinth's many traps confirmed that Farfetch was as fearless as Daredevil and as strong as the Thing, but only capable of becoming a Leak Master if it learned to trust in Ash. Ash offered to sacrifice himself when Farfetch and its Leak fell in a pitfall trap, so Farfetch realized that the trainer only had its best interest at heart and would usher in its growth into the ultimate warrior. Upon completing the challenge, Farfetch asserted its newfound love of Ash by faithfully following his orders when they teamed up with Go and Go Scyther to retrieve Klefki's key. While Go and his Scyther focused on Klefki, Ash and Farfetch distracted Wickstrom and Edgy Slash. Though Farfetch held its own against Edgy Slash and put it on edge with a flurry of strikes, it abandoned the battle as it wanted to protect Ash from Wickstrom's blade. It followed up its heroic gesture by unveiling its knowledge of detect and doing heavy damage with Night Slash, but Go retrieved the key before it had a chance to do any further injury. By showcasing its chivalrous desire to protect Ash no matter the cost afforded, Farfetch passed Wickstrom's final test with flying colors and earned itself a shiny new medal. Thanks to the knightly training Farfetch received at the castle, it was an absolute beast during its battle with Go Scizor in the episode Beyond Chivalry aiming to be a Leak Master. After Farfetch traded blows with its newly evolved friend, detected X Scissor, and ended with Night Slash, Ash healed its injuries at the Viridian Poke Center and randomly ran into Rinto. The two trainers decided to have another battle because Farfetch wanted its revenge and Rinto had just joined the Great Class. As soon as the match started, Rinto showed why he won the first time around. Not only did Glade block Fury Cutter and let off Night Slash, but it also damaged Farfetch's leap by overcoming Detect with Psycho Cut. Although Farfetch met close combat head-on with Night Slash and detected Glade's kick, the psychic fighting type activated faint and shattered its confidence by slicing its leak in half. Right as all seemed lost for poor Farfetch'd, Ash encouraged it to call upon its training and mimic Edgeslash's fighting style. Doing just that, Farfetch charged into battle using the head of its leak as a shield and the stalk as a sword. It blocked Psycho Cut and used Night Slash, but Gallade repelled the assault, kept it at bay, and sent it flying. Strengthened by its trainer's resolve, Farfetch returned to the battlefield more determined than it had ever been. It detected Night Slash, landed a critical blow with Fury Cutter, deflected close combat with another critical hit, and evolved into Surfetch. Rinto didn't want to be the only one without an upgrade, so he ordered Gallade to let itself be hit by Night Slash. He did so because he knew the Dark-type attack would activate his Pokémon's ability, Justified. Although Justified gave Gallade a massive boost in attack power, Surfetch blocked all of his advances, defeated it with Night Slash, won the battle, and advanced Ash to rank 184. Because Surfetch's journey to become a Leak Master is still unraveling, we'll save its other adventures for a future class. For now, let's get to Farfetch's battle record. Farfetch won three battles with victories over Chudle, Goes Farfetch, and Dozer's Gerd. It also defeated Rinto's Gallade, but the win technically happened after it had already evolved. It lost four battles with two losses to Ash's Riolu, one to Bee's Halucha, and another to Rinto's Gallade. Move-wise, Farfetch used Brutal Swing, Detect, Focus Energy, Fury Cutter, and Night Slash. Farfetch was largely shafted in the episodes after its capture, but its three-episode redemption arc proves that it's never too late to revitalize an awesome character. What I love most about Farfetch is that its personality is completely unique. 
Seeing it grow from a selfish brawler into a loyal companion was reminiscent of Charizard's journey, but it still felt fresh as the writers didn't just recycle the Fire-type storyline like they did with Gengar and Tepig. Surfetched is yet to master every leap move or learn Meteor Assault, so I can't wait to cover the rest of its story and see if it'll get the ultimate battle that we all know it's due. On that note, class is adjourned. I'd like to extend special thanks to both Scentbird and the channel's patrons for their continued support. If you'd like to watch class early and get access to other exclusive perks, I highly suggest you sign up for Patreon using the link in the description. For other ways to support the channel and earn extra credit, make sure to like this video, comment your thoughts on Farfetch'd, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're never late to class. Until next time, catch you later.